Welcome to another video from Avenue X. Looking at Chinese Romland in the past week, and let's get right into it. We don't have that much going on. We are moving very close to Chinese New Year next week. Nobody really wants to work, honestly, in China right now. They're either planning to travel or already started. Traveling. We're not gonna have a lot of working related stuff, but entertainment is gonna be more than ever exciting. First, quickly mentioning last week, we said there are that many films that are going into a bloodbath of Chinese cinema during Chinese New Year. I said, as it moves closer, we're gonna see more trailers. Immediately after I said that, Wu Ming, Hidden Blade, uh, the Liang Chao Wei, Wang Yibo, Ming Guo setting espionage film release <laughs> new trailers. This director, Cheng Er, is known to be somebody who does stuff that are very not commercial, not mainstream. He likes to do things that are very, very, let's say, unique with his style. And the funny thing about those trailers is at the end of the trailer, it will have full screen fonts, really huge fonts on the whole screen. <laughs> super commercial movie, super mainstream movie. It is a total satirical comment on its own nature and his own style. Then this week in Dramaland, let's hear what is going on. Number one, there's a drama that went live on January 11th, 111. <laughs> And I don't think anybody is watching it, but might as well just mentioning it. It's another period idol drama looking like a very mm, low budget production called Zhe Jun Ji. English title choice, Husband, and it's led by Zheng Xueying, Xing Zhao Ling, Wang Yilun. Right now, I have too many dramas I need to watch, and then two more new ones that I have to watch are coming. So, unlikely I can catch up with this one. I just have one comment it's Xing Zhao Ling's styling is the most contemporary look that I've ever seen from a Chinese period drama of a Chinese period drama character. What happened to that hair? Then, as this video goes out on the 14th, a drama should have gone live on both ITE and CCTV8, China Central Television's dedicated to television series channel, Kuang Biao Knockout, one of the potentially Ju uh, Wang, king of dramas drama, very similar to Crime Crackdown, if you still remember that drama, with a very big ensemble cast of pretty much the most well recognized, received, and uh, highly active actors in drama land these days. Look at all the middle aged men in this drama. <laughs> They are all the pillars of acting these days in drama land, including Zhang Yi, Zhang Zhijian, Wu Gang, Ni Da Hong, Zhang Songwen, Han Tongsheng. Even if you are not like me, watching five to ten dramas at the same time all the time from Chinese drama land, if you've been around watching Chinese drama for the last say, three, four years, you're gonna recognize 80% of those faces. Very serious, proper old style actors. We have a couple of very pretty flowers, <laughs> let's say, decorated among this whole group of crazy green leaves. Li Yitong. Gao Yi. So this is one of the two most important competitors for the most popular drama around Chinese New Year slot. Last year, it was actually between Ai Qi and Tencent as well, between Lifelong Journey and Kaiduan Reset, although Reset happened earlier. So pretty much Reset finishes and immediately Ren Shijian comes in. This year, they're head to head. They're one day away from each other. Today, we see Knockout. Tomorrow, on the 15th, Three Body. Finally, Tencent puts out the live action drama version of Three Body before Netflix can do it. So now we have uh, an animation version that's going on right now on Bilibili. We have a drama version that will go live on tomorrow, like Sunday. And it's also gonna go on CCTV8 satellite television. So Knockout, ITE, CCTV, and Three Body, Tencent, CCTV. And they're actually on the same CCTV channel, they're just different time slot. Knockout airs earlier, around the 8 to 10 slot. Three Body airs after that, so later evening slot. Let's see which one can do better. This is gonna be a very big competition. During this week, Three Body Problem television series version put out new trailers and other promoting stuff. And this one is led by a lot of familiar faces as well. Zhang Lu Yi, Yu He Wei, Chen Jing, Wang Zi Wen, Lin Yong Jie, Li Xiao Ran, Wang Chuan Jun. Pretty much every face is recognizable. If you've read the book, Three Body Problem, the whole series, this is mostly focused on the first book. Let me add a few more things about Three Body because it's a big IP and it's very exciting. Right now in China, we would have two things, the live action and animation going on. Animation bit bit version started airing at the beginning of December. Right now, as this video goes out, it has just aired its seventh episode and it has <clears throat> been heavily criticized within China, almost unanimously agreed as one of the worst adaptations <laughs> in human history of a book, of a very high caliber, very well-known book. If you like Three Body, don't 
don't watch his animation. And I would definitely say the people who are responsible for doing the animation, which is the company that did Ling Long, surprisingly, they have no idea about what the original novel is about. I even doubt whether they've actually read the original books well. On the technical aspects of things, the 3D uh, animation is really, really bad. The rendering is absolutely horrendous. If you look at the storytelling side of things, the script writing level, oh my god. For any script writing classes, they can use animation through body as a good case study to show you everything about how you should not adapt an original work onto screen. That's how I would put it. Because most of the people who are care about this IP, right now their expectation of the quality of adaptation is at historical low. Therefore, the drama, as long as they can do a little bit good work, it'll be forgiven. To tag along the talk on Three Body, let me quickly mention a series that has started airing at the beginning of this year. Right now it's quickly gathering heat and popularity in China called it is a series of short animation films coming from the very famous Shanghai animation film studio Shamein, one of the greatest animation studios in this world. Not now, okay, but <laughs> decades ago, it was the best without a question. Then it declined, but it still had its glorious olden days. And it was influential very much to a lot of other Asian major animators in history. Anyway, they've recently put out this whole series of short films called Zhongguo Qitan. And these eight short films are done by 11 different animation directors and they're all done in different styles. Some of them are traditional, completely hand-drawn 2D, some are 3D rendering, some are 3D rendered to 2D, some are phrase frame, paper cut, and they're all related to the theme of having a fantastical mythological story somehow ties into China's tradition. So far it has aired three episodes, tomorrow on Sunday will be the fourth one. It got really, really good responses. Far, I think, exceeding those uh, animators, but also Billy Billy, the platform that's airing its expectation. Particularly because right now the three-body animation is going on on Billy Billy, and then this is going on on Billy Billy as well, and people start to compare them and very ruthlessly calling the three-body problem pool of shit and Zhongguo Qitan. So, a glimpse of hope of Chinese animation. So, I would highly recommend you check out these short films. I will leave a link to where you can find them online. On Billy Billy, you do have to have a subscription to watch it, but if not, I think YouTube does have <laughs> all the films right now so far. And then all those films have native English subtitles. You don't have to worry about not being able to understand what's going on. It's good stuff, basically, regardless of its, you know, whether it's Chinese story or anything. Then we have a few more things about Drama Land. First is the drama A Journey to Love, Yi Nian Guan Shan, led by Liu Shishi and Liu Yuning. The Wuxia period drama that not so long ago I've talked about they've started shooting has just arrived. They managed to get everything done before Chinese New Year so that they can all go home and have a good holiday. Then we also have good news on the drama <laughs> and Lu Zhuan. Finally, recently I've been talking about this drama quite a lot. It's been a long time, over a year since it has finished everything and just not airing and waiting to be airing and not hearing news on its progress and stuff. During this week, this drama first has passed the censorship second got the airing license. So technically, Yoku can airdrop this drama anytime now. Although I do doubt whether they would be so silly to drop it now because uh, today we have knockout, tomorrow I have three body, and those are the two for sure fighting for the king of dramas during Chinese Spring Festival slot drama. Because of the uh, caliber of those two dramas, and they actually both go on CCTV, I'd say it would be stupid for Yoku to try to compete with it. It's like the demographics of the audiences, to start with, is going to be much smaller for dramas like Anlo Zhuan compared to the other two. Maybe they're going to put it out after Chinese Spring Festival, but then it's Yoku, so you never know. Yoku is the platform that has consistently performed and proved that they are clueless, literally, about what they have on hand. They cannot recognize the potential potential gold on their hands. They also have no idea about what is crappy on their hands and they never can do that well. They can't even really photoshop their posters very well. So let's see when Anlo Zhuan can come out. For that drama, I just want to see how they're gonna torture Gong Jun's role. Because I do know in the novels, he is like one of the most tortured male leads ever in pair drama writing possibilities. Yeah. 
psychopath in Avenue X cannot wait for that. But finally to wrap up, this week we also have heard a little bit movement of the film that got cancelled or kind of postponed last year, Chang Kong Zhi Wang. Born to Fly, the fighter jet pilot film led by Wang Yibo and Hu Jun. Initially, I think it was meant to go out during last year's national holiday October slot, but then got pulled down right before. Now they've said they're gonna put it out this year. Wu Yi, which is the China's Labor Day holiday slot at the beginning of May. We shall see as we move towards that time, four months down the road, whether that's gonna happen. Film release scheduling, really a million things can happen right between now and then. So that's everything of this week. As I'm filming, this is like only January the 13th, but I've already watched that many dramas. <laughs> Just give you an idea, I'm simultaneously watching Zhong Yu Jifeng Qi, uh, Despite the Strong Wind, on Tencent and ITE. Mango has Qi Yu Feng Di Feng, which I'm really having fun with, the Liu Yifei Li Xian one. Fu Tu Yuan, I may drop it, but I've been watching to this point, so maybe I'll continue watching. <laughs> I don't know. I've finished watching the dramas that have finished airing, such as High Venus, and uh, I've already talked about the finished drama homesick. Then, okay, I have just binged the 39 episodes Flight to You and it's a very mixed opinion drama for me. And now I need to catch up Blood of Youth drama that I know people are trying to make me watch it and my friends are trying to make me watch it. I've only just started it last night. I was literally watching it before I go to sleep. So I'm only at episode two. I need to catch up and that whole thing is 40. It hasn't finished airing but then uh, there's so much coming and then I have to watch Knockout and <laughs> I have to watch Three Body. I love my life. So although, you know, it doesn't look like it's a very busy week, it's insanity for me. Oh, and I'm doing stuff for Chinese New Year's. I've already put out the new stickers <laughs> of bunnies for Chinese Year of Bunny Rabbit. I didn't even like put it out on social media. I just put it on my shelf and forgot about it. And then just to remind you again, next week's weekly video will be one day earlier, will be on Friday because Saturday will be Chinese New Year's Eve and I'll be doing live stream. Hey, thank you for watching our new ex. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long.